Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to show you how you can implement CRUD APIs inside a fast API. So let's begin. So I'm going to implement some basic CRUD APIs. Uh, we're going to implement the POST method, the GET method, the PULT method and the DELETE method here. All right, so how I'm going to implement it is it, 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 it's just going to be a simple item CRUD function. So it, we are going to have some items and we're going to have some item table and then we're going to implement some CRUD functions on that table. All right, so let's begin. So first of all, I'm going to define the main file here so for the main file so before that i can define my database file actually and so for the database file i can make another file here which is going to be something like db2.py because i have already made the db.py in the previous video so from this uh the first of all i'm going to install some requirements so first of all i'm going to install the sql alchemy for connecting to my database sql alchemy then i'm going to import um something like databases or but we can skip that for now and obviously the fast api and uvicorn as well so i think that would be enough for this time so let's begin so for the database file first of all what we're gonna have is first of all have the from sql alchemy command and then what we're gonna have here is import the create engine from here there then what we're gonna have is importing from sql alchemy we're gonna have something like declarative base and then we're going to have session maker to basically build a session inside our database engine so for the database url we're going to have it on our local system right here i'm going to name it something like items.db so this is going to be a local database of items on my device itself but if you wish to connect it to an online online database you can also connect that using the connection string for that database online all right so now i'm going to define the engine here which is going to be the create engine right here all right moving forward we can have the base here now so base is going to be the declarative base of this uh sql table then we're going to have the session local here which is going to be a session make an instance the bind is referred to as engine auto commit is false and auto flush is also false all right so this is going to be our db2.py table right here db2.py file right here which is going to create an items table inside our database so i already have an items.db here i'm going to delete this here to avoid the conflicts between my databases all right so moving forward now we can make our models file so for that we can build uh make a file something like models2.py because i have already have a models file before and this is going to be a simple file just having one table for item so that from sql alchemy we can import not create engine this time we have to import column integer string and float for different types of fields inside our table and we're also going to import uh db2 from db2 what we're going to import is the base all right so now we can move forward by building our class which is actually the database table here the item table so this is going to be a reference of base of our database engine all right moving forward First of all, what I'm going to define is the table name parameter, which is going to be the items parameter here. And there are some extra fields here. So the fields are ID, which is a column of integer, the primary key, and also you index equals to true for searching through ID sufficiently. Then we have name, which is a column of string itself again. And apart from that, I can remove the description here and I have the price here and I have the quantity here. All right, simple this is just a simple item table right here inside my database which i'm going to create after my execution of this application all right so moving forward now we can actually develop our application so i'm going to name it something like crud.py for now so for crud.py we can start building our fast api here from fast api import fast api then we're going to import pydantic models for basically referencing to our model input type for the request so that's going to be from pydantic import base model now from db2 what we're going to import is uh first of all we're going to import engine then we're going to import the session of our engine as well all right from the models what we're going to import is the base and the item model all right perfect so this is perfect now we can move forward and define our fast API instance right here apart from that what we're going to do is now base dot metadata dot create all engine by equals to engine this this is going to create all the tables inside our database and models file 
inside our database itself. All right, so now moving forward, now we can define a pyidentic model here. So that is going to be something like item schema. So the item schema is a reference of base model with three inputs, which are name, description, and price. Name, price, and quantity, actually. I'm sorry for that. So the quantity is going to be an int. So as you can see, uh, in the model, we had four values actually, which is uh, ID, name, price, and quantity. But ID is actually a primary key, so we do not need to pass in through our request, uh, which we're going to hit through the API endpoint. All right, so now we can move forward and define our post method, the post endpoint of our application, which is going to be the items endpoint right here. And this is going to be and now I can define the function here, which is going to be something like define create item. Then the input is going to be the pyidentic model of item schema. The DB is going to be the session DB, which we had started earlier. And then we can have the DB item equals to item of name equals to item dot name, quantity equals to item dot quantity, and the price equals to item dot price. So this is going to be a DB item, which is an object of the install, which is an object of the class item. So that is basically what we're going to implement here. And then we can db uh, execute the command which is db.addDB item and then db.commit and refresh that item inside our database and then just close the database and then returning the new items. So this is our basic post request here. And now we're going to handle a basic get request. So for the get request, what we're going to do is have the app.get items slash item ID. So we're going to have, so we will get that item ID using this get function so for this we're going to uh, implement a function which is going to be define get item and this function will have two input uh we'll have just one input which is going to be item id and that's going to be int which is going to be extracted from the url itself here so this will not require any pydantic models because we, we do not need to actually post a request or basically we do not need any extra data except the item id here so that is going to be a simple uh api call right here which is going to be get a items slash item id api call so for the db i'm going to define it as session local so we are basically running a local session of db here which is going to be reference which is going to be used in all the endpoints here so that makes the process a little bit easier and the item is going to be db dot query so we're going to execute a query inside our item model here now so this query is going to be dot filter all of the items and the item filtered are going to be item dot id is equals to the item id parameter for our url now we're going to have the first entry or a first object from these it is eventually going to be the it is eventually going to be only one object because the uh, item id is a unique value but just for the sake of uh, security or something like that we can move forward and now close the db here and now we can add or check something like if not item then we can raise some exception so we can raise an, an exception here or if you do not want to raise an exception we can just return an error which is item not found and apart uh, else what we're going to do is just return the item because we have found the item inside our database all right perfect so moving forward now we can do what is now we can build an put endpoint so for the put endpoint what does a put endpoint do is basically modify a current uh, entry inside our database so for that we also need to have the item id as one of the parameters in the url so this is going to be tabled as app dot put items slash item id so now i'm going to name our uh, endpoint something like update item and this is going to be the item id which is going to be the end and for this what we can do is we can actually get the item schema pyidentic model because eventually we need to take the input of whole item model inside this request because eventually we're going to uh, modify the model so we need to have all the end of all the fields of the object as well all right so now i'm going to define the session local database here and then we can have the db item for the query as db.query item.filter item.id equals equals to item id dot first so this is basically getting the first object inside the item table with that item id so if we do not have that item id what uh, we just simply return an error which is item not found but if we do have an item id then what we does what we do is basically modify that items parameters basically that items field so that is db items name is now changed to item dot name which is 
which was our pydantic input here so similarly quantity and price are also changed here and then we commit that command and then refresh the database item here then we close the database and just return the database item here perfect all right so now we can we have done the put method also and now we can do what we can implement the delete request here which is the last step of our current operations create remove uh, which is which were create read update and delete so the, we are on the delete part right now so for deleting also we need to have an id of our item so for that we can also we need to also have item id inside our endpoint name as well and now i'm going to define the function as define delete item and i'm just going to pass a single item id as the input because that's all we need to delete that item so first of all i'm going to refer to the our session local database here and then moving forward we're going to get that item from our database so that's going to be db.query from the item table we're going to filter on the basis of item.id which should be equal to our input id itself and we're going to get the first element of that first so the first case is if we do not get that item id what happens then that simply means that it does not exist all right so i just started python here for some reason let me just exit it all right and yeah so if the db item does not even exist so that's just a simple red flag and we can just close the db here and just uh, return some kind of error message right here which is going to be a json for error and item not found something like that all right moving forward what we can do in the else case is basically just simply execute our delete function because that is eventually what this endpoint does so we're going to def delete that db item and that's it we have deleted that the db item and then I now i can commit my database and also refresh but in this case i do not need to refresh because it is eventually deleted itself so i'm going to close the database here after closing we can simply just return a success message something like item deleted successfully all right perfect so we have implemented all of the four crud operations for our item model here and now we can test it out so for testing out i will first of all run this uh fast api using uvcorn so this is going to be uvcorn and the name of our file is crud and the name of the application inside our file is app itself app and then i'm going to enable the re reload flag here so one more thing from for the declarative base and session maker system uh, the settings we actually have to import them using the sql.orm instead of sql alchemy all right so now it should work perfect so let's just wait for this to start up and as you can see application startup has completed so let's now go to our browser and check out our fast api endpoints all right so i'll just go to the swagger ui of our fast api here which is going to be slash docs and as you can see we have all the methods right here which are post get put and delete so let's test it out each one one by one so first of all i'm going to test out a get method so that should eventually return us nothing here so let's just wait for that so first of all i'm going to create an item here so for the post item i'm going to try it out here so i have three fields here name quantity and price so first of all i'm going to name it something like uh something like sugar and the quantity is one the price is something like five four and i'm going to execute this and for this i have this return i've been returned with the response code 200 which means the item was created successfully and we, i have been returned with the item itself so as you can see the id for this item was one this auto in, this actually increments automatically so i'm just going to create another thing which is going to be name as t uh, quantity i'm going to keep as two and the price is going to be um seven seven and i'm going to execute this query now all right so as you can see the id has been all auto incremented to do here and we have made two objects inside our database perfect so let's move forward now we can hit our get request now click on try it out here and for the item id first of all i'm going to get the my sugar item here which is going to be here perfect then i'm going to get my t which is this perfect and if i try to get another uh some other thing it's it should just give me an error here yeah so it just give me an error which says item not found perfect so that is how actually my get endpoint was supposed to work and now we can click on put so let's just try the updation method here 
So then we have already have name quantity price here. So for the updation, I need to pass another parameter here, which is going to be ID. So for the ID, we can I can pass it here itself. So now I can change the name quantity and price according to that. So the name was sugar for this quantity. I can now shift the quantity to five now. And for the price, I can keep it for itself. So now I'll execute this query. And as you can see, we have got the response 200, which means that it was successful. And we have got the name as sugar price for quantity has been increased to five and the ID is one itself. So now if I get this item here, which is to the one, I should be able to get the quantity as five. Perfect. So th that means we have updated our sugar here. That's great. Now moving forward, now we can work with our delete API, delete endpoint here. So I, for the item ID, if I pass some random integer, I should get error item not find, found. Perfect. So this is actually the error because that ID does not even exist. So now I'll just pass in my ID one. So let's see what happens. All right. So it says message item deleted successfully. So that means item has been deleted. So if I again execute the one query, it says item not found, which means it is not present inside our database now. So if I again use the get endpoint to get that data uh, to get that item i again get the error as error item not found so that means our delete endpoint is working great as well so, so perfect so that's how basically our uh, all four crud operations work inside our fast api and that's how you can basically write some crud apis in fast so guys um thanks that's it for the video and thanks for watching